Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And in today's video, we'll be looking at the pneumatic system of this aircraft. We have the Otter today. Otter means air. Don't ask why. That's just the way it is. And just uh, like we did with the electric system, we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into the pneumatic system. Anything that has to do with air on this aircraft. This is a requested video. So thanks again for all your requests. And uh, yeah, let's uh, go straight into it. So why does an aircraft need air? Well, there's a lot of uses for air on an aircraft. Uh, one is, of course, air conditioning, pressurization in the cabin, but we also need it to start the engines for the water system and the hydraulic system. So a lot of uses, and therefore we have several sources of air. So we can get air from the engines, the APU, from a ground unit, and by ram air. So it's a fairly complex system with a lot of uh, redundancy. So let's have a look at it now. So let's look at the engines first. The engines uh, give us air from two different stages within the engine. Uh, one is the intermediate uh, pressure stage and one the high pressure stage. Now, when we are on the ground and the engine runs in idle, we need both of those stages to get enough air into the aircraft. However, once you apply takeoff power, that valve in between the intermediate and high pressure stage will actually close and the intermediate pressure stage is all that is required to give us all the air we need. From the engines, this hot air is going through a bleed valve. The bleed valve essentially allows us to shut off any air coming from that particular engine. We can use this if the engine is on fire to avoid smoke coming into the cabin, but also for some other purposes. So the bleed valve sits right after the engine and we can use it to shut off any air supply from that engine. Once this hot air has passed through the bleed valve, it goes into a unit that consists of several different components. So there's something like a pre-cooler, there's some sensors, there's some heat exchangers. And by the way, these things actually exist on the top of the pylon. So if you have ever wondered what these vents are, well, this is what it is. It's part of the heat exchanger and in there we also have the pre-cooler and all this other fancy stuff. Once the air has gone through that, it goes into the mixing unit. Now the mixing unit you can imagine like a big box where all this air comes together. There's also some air, cold air coming from the outside and it all gets mixed up to get the right temperature we want. This is also the first point where we can actually connect both air systems. So between engine one and engine two, in the mixing unit, there's what we call a cross bleed valve that allows us to move the air between the two systems. Should the APU be used to supply air, this will also go directly into the mixing unit. And once again, we have an APU bleed valve to switch it off just in case anything goes wrong. This is also where air comes in if it is supplied by the airport and by ground units. As you can see, there is no bleed valve here. This is because these ground units have their own safety systems with their own sensors and would switch off immediately if something is not quite right. Now, out of the mixing unit, we have two valves and they provide us with anti-ice. So if you switch on the anti-ice on the aircraft, essentially what happens is you get very hot air out of the mixing unit and that flows through the aircraft parts where you have selected the anti-ice system and that will heat it up and melt the ice. Once the air leaves the mixing unit, it goes into another big complex unit. So this unit has things like a pack flow sensor, a compressor, there's even a bypass that allows air to completely bypass the whole unit. There's lots of sensors and stuff. It's very complicated. We are pilots. We like to have things simple. So we simply call this the pack. And once the air has gone through the packs, it finally gets delivered into the aircraft. So this is mostly the cabin 
and uh, you get the air through some recirculation valves there's also some cabin fans and of course you have the little valves above your head that blow air directly onto you and another thing we find up here is the ram air now ram air is essentially a valve that can open and that lets ice cold air into the aircraft this is only used in emergencies and it's a last resort if everything else fails we can still get some air from the outside now of course as you can imagine this air is very cold the ram air will only work if the aircraft is actually moving hence the name ram air it comes in to a valve that is pointing into the direction of flight and also there's some restrictions in terms of altitude etc etc but this is for emergencies so i'm just gonna mention it here once again we have a valve the emergency ram air valve that regulates this so let's look at all of this in the cockpit so the two main pages you need for pneumatics are the condition page which we have open now and the bleed page so let's open the bleed page and as you can see this is pretty much what we've just looked at so down here we have the engines one and two the intermediate pressure and the high pressure as you can see the engines are currently off which means that that valve is it's all closed there's nothing coming from the engines here we have that unit i was talking about you can see the temperature and the pressure running through that unit and then we go through here and we go into the mixing unit which is offline right now we have the ground air which is not connected this would be APU which is everything is switched off right now and here we have the pack so the pack we have down here the pack flow which at the moment is zero no air coming in there's a compressor so this will give you the temperature coming out of the compressor there's a bypass valve so this is shown here how much air is actually going past the entire unit here at the moment zero and then we have the temperature coming out of the pack and we have this on both sides and here in the middle we have the ram air that i was mentioning so let's start the apu and see what happens okay so now the apu is running i've also switched on the apu bleed and we can see a few things have changed so the apu is now supplying air we can see here the cross bleed valve has automatically opened because we only have one source supplying the whole system and once again so here we have the valve that has opened here we have the temperature coming in the bypass valve and therefore the temperature coming out so essentially what this is telling us is the air going in has 75 degrees celsius is cooled down but some of the air is going around the cooling and is mixed here again and therefore we get a temperature of 20 degrees celsius and that is fed here into the cabin the next thing I'd like to do is start an engine. So let's start engine number two. You can see during the engine start, no air is supplied to the cabin. This is because all the air is now used to spin the fan. And once the fan has enough speed, some fuel is injected into the engine and it starts running autonomously. Okay, the engine is running now, but as you can see, we do not get air from the engine. This is because according to Airbus logic, the APU has priority over the engine. Also interesting, you can see here that the high pressure and intermediate pressure are both supplying air into the system, which is currently shut off automatically. As I said, the APU is providing air for everything right now in order to change this you either switch off the apu bleed or you just switch off the apu so what i'm gonna do now is switch off the apu bleed and we're gonna try something that actually i haven't tried on the phoenix yet so let's see how realistic this is okay so let's switch off the apu bleed let's go back down here so as we can see the apu is no longer supplying air we have instead here this engine engine number two supplying air into the pack which then goes here into the cabin 
this switch here we would have to uh, provide manually this is the cross bleed switch and this is what I'm gonna do now because now the engine is providing air into the system so can we use that air to start the other engine to spin the fan well for that we would have to open this valve here the cross bleed valve that means that air is running across here into this engine and we could use that to spin the uh, fan. This is called a cross bleed start but there is uh, actually a bit of a caveat to this and I'm gonna be very it's gonna be very interesting to see if Phoenix has implemented this so let me just go back so I will expect now an ECAM warning if we do this so let's try this out so up here on the panel on the air conditioning panel you can see this again looks very similar to what we've just discussed and here we have the cross bleed valve so I'm gonna put this to open and now when we come down here we can see that has opened and the air is now coming across and I'm now going to try and start the engine with this so the other engine so we're gonna start engine number one and let's see what happens okay and this is correct we get an ECAM warning engine one start fault low start air pressure bleed air supply check why is this it's because this engine cannot actually supply enough air into the other engine to start it up at least not in this configuration so there's a procedure for this and that procedure is that we simply apply a tiny bit of power on the running engine and this will increase let's just do this again increase the airflow so let's just apply some power here on engine number two and this should in theory help so let's try it again and there we have it the engine is spooling up everything is looking good so yeah we've now performed a cross bleed start because you have to apply some power on the running engine this can only be done at certain areas at the airport it, the airport needs to be informed they need to make sure nobody's behind the aircraft no equipment etc etc it's quite a complex procedure but technically speaking it's actually fairly simple so we'll put this back into idle and now we have both engines running once again the phoenix airbus shines i don't know i i am still amazed by the amount of system depth in this aircraft okay let's look at uh, two or three other things okay so let's pretend for a moment that we require wing anti-ice as i told you here is the mixing unit and this is where we get the air from for the anti-ice so i'm gonna switch that on wing anti-ice and you can see here we now have the valves open and anti-ice displayed here so this is another way to check that the engine ice is actually working properly so switched off the apu and the anti-ice and this is what you should be seeing on the ground so the engines are supplying the air through both stages and then here the air flows through the pack into the cabin the cross bleed valve is closed which means these systems run independently should one of them fail the aircraft automatically opens the valve and the air is supplied by one of the remaining systems so fairly automatic the whole thing now let's try something and let's apply some power to the engines and see if we can get the valve within the engines to close so I'm just gonna add some power now and now you can see we are no longer getting air from the high pressure stage only the intermediate because that supplies more than enough air for the entire system so let's put the engines back into idle and now the valve opens again because we no longer get enough air from the intermediate pressure stage okay so very last thing we're gonna talk about then here is this panel so pack flow essentially like we said it's how much air comes out of the pack low is 80% norm is 100% high is 120% and 
20%. Different companies have different ideas on how to do this. We basically never use high, we always use norm or low. Low is when we have very few passengers on board. Here you can adjust the temperature and this will essentially adjust the cold and hot air mixture for each of these sections. So cockpit, forward cabin, aft cabin. The synoptic here is very similar to what we've just discussed. You have the packs, you have the engine bleeds, you have the pack here that you can switch off. You have the ram air for emergencies and of course you have the APU bleed. Cross bleed should always be in auto so that the uh, aircraft will automatically compensate if something goes wrong. If you need to do cross bleed manually, you go to open. Shut is for certain uh, emergency procedures where you really don't want the air to come across from one side to the other. And that's essentially it. As you can see, again, a very small panel and it's all pretty automatic. The only thing we actually use here on a daily basis are these knobs here to adjust the temperature and this knob here before the flight where we switch between norm and low depending on the amount of passengers. The rest is all done by the aircraft and uh, yeah I hope you now have a bit of a better understanding of what all this stuff down here means. And that brings us already to the end of the video. I hope you found it useful, I hope you found it interesting and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best, bye bye.